In lesson 3 of this tutorial, we'll go over what is necessary to set up the system settings and configuration. This will be done through a special settings configuration window, and in that window you'll have the option of seeing the system information and being able to change the smart camera's name as well as being able to see the firmware version as discussed previously. You'll be able to change the GUI's appearance including colors. You'll be able to set the camera's time. You'll be able to set up and use password management. You'll be able to configure the network settings of the camera. You'll be able to set up and use the digital camera's built-in I.O. You'll be able to establish and use the communication settings, which are different for the I.O. version versus the field bus versions. And finally, you'll be able to configure the camera reporting functionality. To start to make these settings, we start by typing in the address of the camera and logging on to the camera. Once we're logged on to the camera, we're going to go to the system setting menu. To do this, we go to the top right side of the screen where you see the small gear icon. Click on that icon. That will open up the system setting menu. In the system setting window, you will notice on the left side there are multiple tabs that can be clicked on to access all the different pieces of information in the system to either monitor or change. Starting with the Systems tab, you'll see the name of the camera on the top. This name can be clicked on and changed, customized for either its location or purpose of camera, for example. This is followed by the system name itself. This is the system that's running the software. In this case, it would be a BVS smart camera. This is followed by the serial number of the individual camera itself, as well as the firmware versions and software versions. This will then be followed by the temperature in degree C that the camera is presently running at, and finally, the log files. Log files can be very handy to going back and tracking either errors or changes made to the individual software programs based on the, when the event was logged at. For more information on this, see the product's individual product manual. The next tab down is the Color Scheme tab. On this tab, you can actually apply a custom name that will appear for each at the top of the screen for the software instead of the BVS cockpit name. You'll be able to turn on or turn off individual user settings to customize what you're setting in this panel. You will also be able to add a logo other than the Balif logo if you wish to change the logo that's shown on the screen, as well as setting the logo size. For individual settings on this tab, again refer to the user manual. In the System Time tab, you'll be able to set up the system time that will be run on the camera and noted, as well as the time zone. You can also use an NTP server to have this time synchronized with the server itself. The User Management tab is what you can use to actually set up user password levels for access to features in the camera. By default, this tab will show the password protection action is turned off by default. If you turn this on, you can actually set and use different levels of password protection for everything from the user to an administrator. But beware, Keep track of these passwords so you have access especially to the administrator level. In the Networking tab, you have several options for configuring and setting up the network, starting with obtaining an IP address automatically through a DHCP server or setting a static address. If setting a static address, you have a choice of the static IP as well as the gateway and the port number that will be used. By default, port 80 is typically what is used. You can also set up the camera to be accessed by name. If you do so, you want to activate the AVE Bonjour setting on there. If that's done, the camera will be identified on the network automatically by its name that you configure at this point. If you are using a field bus unit, you will have the option to activate a second network interface. If doing so, this will enable the connection to the BBS Cockpit software web interface via the Fieldbus network port. 
This option is deactivated if there's no connection between the field bus and gigabit port. On the digital input and output tab, you have the ability to configure up to eight internal I.O. within the camera. For the specific settings of each individual I.O. in terms of its direction, please refer to the user manual for a detailed explanation of how to use these settings. But be aware, there are differences between the I.O. variant and the field bus variant. For example, in the I.O. variant, pins 0 or I.O. 0 and I.O. 1 are actually logically connected to both pins 2 and 4 of the power connector, as well as pin 1 and pin 3 of the I.O. port connector. Also, I.O. 6 and I.O. 7 are only accessible through the I.O. lighting port connector on pins 2 and pin 4, typically used for connecting a light source and triggering it. In the case of an I.O. field bus, excuse me, in the case of a field bus variant, only I.O. 0 and I.O. 1 go to a physical pin on the power connector through pin 2 and pin 4. Pin 6 and pin 7 are brought out through the I.O. link port connector through pin 2 and pin 4. The remaining I.O., I.O. 2 through I.O. 5, as well as I.O. 0 through I.O. 7 if needed, are all connected through the field bus accessibility and can be configured depending on the type of field bus you're using. Refer to the individual manuals for either of these variants to get more details on the electrical connectivity as well as the logical and functional connectivity of this I.O. The communication tab will vary depending on the variant of camera you have. In this case, this is the I.O. version of the camera. In this tab, you will have the ability to select either UDP or TCP mode of operation, as well as being able to set the port number or being able to set the camera into a simulation mode. If you have a field bus version of the camera, under the mode at the top, you will have a choice of selecting either the TCP or UDP, as you saw in the previous example, or you can select a field bus mode. If you select field bus mode, the tab contents will change accordingly. By default, the camera will always come up in Profinet. Regardless of which version of the camera you choose to use in field bus mode, you will notice that the top of the tab will be similar. You will have the choice of selecting simulation mode as discussed previously. You will also have a field bus status icon telling you the connectivity status of the field bus connection. You will also have an overflow results buffer to the PLC that you can check. It is advised that you always keep this box checked. You will also have an IO link device class, which will not be active unless an IO link device is connected. As mentioned, when moving on to the field bus settings, you will notice you have a drop down to allow you to select which field bus you plan to use. The present options available are Profinet and Ethernet IP. By default, the camera is always available in Profinet upon first startup. To change to Ethernet IP, simply click on the drop down and select the Ethernet IP version. When looking down this tab, you will also find that you have a choice of several different options as well as information about the Profibus settings of the camera, starting with the version number. You will then also see the MAC address by default for the field bus. You will also have an option for the handshake timeout. You can select or deselect this timeout. If you select, it will activate a 500 millisecond timeout for the handshaking of the process data. The next is the station name. You have the choice to be able to see what the station name is by default or change the station name in some cases. Next you will see the IP address for the field bus IP address. In the case of Profinet, you will have a choice of an IP address and a subnet mask. Back to the PLC. Finally, you have IO link mode. Generally, PLC gateway mode is typically what's used for the IO link mode for the connection of this port. 
For additional information on these settings, refer to the manual or contact SEC Tech Support for additional information about each of these settings. If Ethernet IP is selected for the field bus, the settings for this tab will change slightly. The top of the tab will remain the same for the simulation mode, field bus status, and overflow results buffer to the PLC. On the Ethernet tab itself, you will now still see the version number for the firmware, the MAC address for the field bus, as well as the handshake timing timeout settings discussed previously. You will now also have the option of an IP mode. The IP mode and subnet mask and gateway can either be set manually or automatically through DHCP protocol or the boot P protocol. This is where you will make that selection. You will also have the choice if setting manually or statically to an IP address, a subnet mask followed by the gateway address. Set these settings if using it in manual. Finally, the I.O. link again used to define the I.O. link device port and how it will be used with the PLC, and finally any I.O. link devices that will be plugged in or are plugged in to the camera at the time of configuring the port. Finally, in the Reports tab, you will have the option to configure reports for an external use with an FTP server for sending both data as well as images through that server. In this tab, you will set up the FTP server information, including a user and password if needed, as well as being able to select the type of results and or images that will be sent out to the FTP server. A file name prefix is also provided to allow you to be able to pre-configure the, the prefix of the file name. This concludes this tutorial on the system's settings configuration. For more information on any of the individual tabs covered in this, go to the individual user manual for the variant of the smart camera you are using. In the next lesson, we will begin the process of learning how to set up and configure the basic applications.